Hey, what's going on guys? Today we're gonna go over the Auto Haunter Jade speed build I teased in the last video, and man is it crazy. It feels even stronger than the Garg Locust Swarm build. So let's first talk about the interactions that make this possible. So first up we have the new Crucible effect that casts Haunt at enemies affected by Locust Swarm. Then you have the two-piece Jade set that reads, when Haunt lands on an enemy already affected by Haunt, it instantly deals 3,500 seconds worth of Haunt damage. You pair this with Creeping Death. So basically we're trying to hit each enemy at least twice with Haunt to proc this. We'll run the Wormwood in the cube to passively cast Locust Swarm. Each time it casts, it'll fire off new instances of Haunt. And then of course Haunt itself reads, if the enemy dies, the spirit will haunt another nearby enemy. We'll take the Resentful Spirit's Rune for a second cast, and the Haunting Girdle for a third. This allows you to pretty much run through the rift barely casting anything. You want a soul harvest on bosses and elites and champs, severance around the map for movement speed, horrify stalker for movement speed, get your zombie dogs out to proc fierce loyalty, or piranhas depending on which ability you want to use. Alright, next up let's talk about the abilities. So first up you have Locust Swarm Pestilence. Now you're going to run this even with the Wormwood in the cube because the Wormwood will take on the rune that you have equipped on your bar. Soul Harvest, it doesn't matter which rune you run, you're going to have all of them with the Jade Harvester 4-piece bonus. Spirit Walk Severance for movement speed and invulnerability along with the Shukrani's Triumph. Horrify Stalker mostly for the movement speed, and it will also proc Rochelle's Ring of Larceny for even more movement speed to zip around the map. Haunt Resentful Spirits for that second Haunt cast, and this is just like the Locust Swarm with Pestilence. The haunts that you're auto-casting will take on the rune that you have on your bar. For the 6th ability, you can run Summon Zombie Dogs with Fierce Loyalty for movement speed, or you can swap this out for Piranhas. For passives, we have Grave Injustice, mostly for the cooldown reduction. Creeping Death paired with the Jade Harvester set for massive damage. Gruesome Feast, you're going to pretty much have 5 stacks of this up all the time with how fast you're moving. And then Fierce Loyalty again for that movement speed. If you decide you don't want to run this in Zombie Dogs, then uh, you could switch this out for a damage passive such as Pierce the Veil or Confidence Ritual. Alright, that brings us to the gear. Now we're going to have some slight variations here depending on if you're running speed greater rifts or if you're running speed T16 for keys. The footage you're going to see in the video is T16 and then 95 speed GRs. You can definitely go higher than 95, although it does get a little bit difficult with single target on the bosses at the end once you get up to around 100. But with high paragon, it's definitely doable, probably up to 105s. So we're running 5 pieces of jade. Gloves, shoulders, chest, pants, and boots, and then the Ring of Royal Grandeur in the cube, the Quetzalcoatl Voodoo Mask, Squirt's Necklace for damage, Lacumbra's Bracers for the damage reduction, Shikrani's Triumph for staying in Spirit Walk more often, and then, of course, the damage increase. Running the Engiom, you could also potentially run a Sacred Harvester or an Echoing Fury in this slot. Of course, we have the Ring of Emptiness that's going to increase our damage against enemies that are affected by Locust Swarm or are haunted, the Rochelle's Ring of Larceny for the movement speed, and then the Haunting Girdle for that extra haunt cast. Now, something I did mess around with a little bit is wearing Quetzalcoatl in the cube and then running the Guardian set helmet and bracers. Gives you a bunch of damage and a ridiculous amount of life. It's an option. Uh, overall, though, it felt much better with, with the Cumbras for the damage reduction. For Legendary Gems, we've got the Bane of the Trapped, the Bane of the Powerful, and then the Boon of the Hoarder for T16. It's going to give us movement speed when we pick up gold and extra gold. If you're running Greater Rifts, you can swap this out for a Zay's Stone of Vengeance or potentially a Molten Wildebeest Gizzard to keep your Squirt's Necklace damage increase up more often. For the Kanai's Cube, of course, we've got the Wormwood in the weapon slot, as we've already discussed. I've been running the Crim's Buff Belt for more movement speed, 25% more movement speed. You could also run a Gold Wrap for T16 to basically become immortal. Pairs really well with the Boon of the Hoarder. And like I said, there's some variations you can do where you run Quetzalcoatl in the cube here for, for other items on your character. And then we have the Ring of Royal Grandeur in the Jewelry slot to make sure we get that six-piece Jade bonus. So that's pretty much it, guys. A little quick rundown of exactly how this works. I will make a more in-depth build guide on this if it survives the PTR. Blizzard, this is my challenge to you. Don't kill this build. This is probably the coolest speed build we've ever had, man. It is just so cool. Um, you know, I thought it was awesome enough to have a really good auto-cast Locust Swarm build. 
Well, guess what? It's even better to have a really good autocast haunt build. So leave it in the game. Other classes are probably still faster at T16 than this. And it's not like this is pushing high greater rifts. So yeah, don't kill it. Like let it, let it live. Let us have a really fun speed build. Let Jade do something for once, which is awesome. Yeah, we would love for Jade to be a pushing build, but if it's not going to be, at least let us have this. So anyways, guys, hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.